consider an instruction pipeline with five stages fetch instruction stage decode instruction stage fetch operand stage execute instruction and write operand stage the state delays for each stage is given there are intermediate storage buffers after each stage and the delay for each buffer is 1 nanosecond. A program consisting of 12 instructions I1, I2, I3 to I12 is executed in this pipeline processor. Instruction I4 is the only branch instruction and its branch target is I9. If the branch is taken during the execution of this program, the time needed to complete the program is so we need to find out the total execution time of this program containing 12 instruction and one among these instructions is a branch instruction i4 is a branch instruction whose branch target is i9 and the branch is taken during the execution of this program so after the execution stage of the program sorry after the execution stage of the instruction branch will be taken so first of all we shall find out the time period for each clock since we need to find out the execution time in nanosecond the clock time period is the longest state delay sum of the longest state delay and buffer delay the longest state delay is 10 nanosecond the buffer delay is 1 nanosecond so one clock time period is 11 nanosecond now when we execute this program on a five stage pipeline processor in the first clock in the first 11 nanosecond we fetch the instruction i1 in the next clock we decode that instruction we fetch i2 in the third clock we move to the fetch operand stage of i1 we decode i2 and fetch i3 in the fourth clock I1 moves to execution stage, I2 is in the fetch operand stage, I3 is decoded and I4 is fetched and I4 is a branch instruction but the branch will be taken after the execution stage within the pipeline. So in the next cycle I4 moves to the decode stage, in the next cycle I4 moves to the fetch operand stage, in the next cycle I4 is in the execution stage. And once the execution stage is over, it will be realized that the target instruction, the next instruction to be executed is I9. So we can flush out all these instructions from the pipeline. From the next cycle onwards, we can start fetching instruction I9. And since the branch target is decided in stage 4, the next instruction, the following instruction will be processed out with 4 clock cycles. So within the next four clock cycles, we get the instruction I9 out. From then on, each instruction will be out in each clock cycle. So including the cycles required to fill the pipe, including the time required to fill the pipe, the total cycles required for this program execution is 15 clock cycles and one clock time period is 11 nanoseconds. Thus the execution time is 15 into 11 nanoseconds. We can also calculate it directly. One clock time period is calculated to be 11 nanoseconds, which are the instructions to be executed. I1, I2, I3, I4, then I9, I10, I11, and I12. Each of this instruction take one clock cycle. There are eight instructions. Each of these instructions take one clock cycle. And because of the one branch instruction, one instruction takes some extra cycles and that extra cycles depend upon the stage at which the branch target is decided. The branch target is decided after stage 4. Hence, the extra cycles required for the instruction is 3. So, one instruction takes 3 cycles extra. Hence, once the pipe is filled, the number of cycles required to complete the program is 8 plus 3, 11 cycles. And the number of cycles required to fill the pipe is 4 cycles. In the 5th cycle, we get the first instruction out. So, after 4 clock cycles, within each cycle, we get one instruction. But one instruction takes 3 cycles extra. So, Time to fill the pipe is 4 cycles and from then on we take 11 cycles, total 15 clock cycles. So the execution time is 15 into 11, 165 nanoseconds is the total execution time to complete this program.